The dangers of cybersecurity have been a growing concern over the past couple of years as numerous groups have warned of increasing threats. In fact, more than 50 bills have been introduced in Congress to address the mounting fears of cyber warfare. And security breaches of major brands as well as government divisions such as the Pentagon have added an even greater emphasis to these issues. But does the evidence actually point to potential cyber warfare or are the media and government officials overly hyping the threat? Well, to help us answer this question, we're going to bring in Jerry Brito, the director of the Technology Policy Program at George Mason University, who has studied cybersecurity extensively. Thanks for joining us today, Jerry. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Well, in an op-ed piece you wrote on Wired, you said, quote, evidence that cyber attacks and cyber espionage are real and serious concerns is not evidence that we face a grave risk of national catastrophe, end quote. So does this mean that, that you think the cybersecurity threat is being overblown? I do. Um, it's a very serious threat, and we should take it seriously. Um, but what you hear oftentimes from uh, members of Congress, uh, from uh, agency heads who are looking to have cybersecurity uh, legislation passed, is that without legislation, we will see a Pearl Harbor attack type type attack. We will see a 9/11 type attack, and oftentimes they'll say that uh, cyber weapons uh, would have the same destructive capacity as uh, WMDs or nuclear weapons, and that they pose an existential threat to the country. And that aspect of it is is definitely uh, overblown, in my view. So what examples can you share uh, th throughout history that you believe helped to prove your perspective on this? Well, so um, you, you have to look at what they say, the rhetoric that they use, and the evidence that they cite. So like I said, the, the threat that they cite is that uh, a cyber attack could cause a critical infrastructure to fail, causing blackouts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or for example, it might cause trains to derail, planes to fall out of the sky. These are all examples that are given by these folks. But when you ask them, what's the evidence for this? What they point to are, is number one, they'll point to, to, to distributed denial of service attacks. And this is um, when a uh, web server, or not necessarily a web server, but a server of any kind, is overwhelmed with requests for information. Uh, oftentimes it is a, a website, and you bring the website down. Uh, this happened to the Senate recently, it's happened to the CIA, mm -hmm. and it's happened to lots of government agencies and lots of uh, uh, corporations, uh, oftentimes done by state actors, uh, but also by groups like Anonymous. Um, this is a very real threat, it's bad, uh, but when you look at what sort of damage uh, it causes, it is um, more than anything else, it's an inconvenience. Uh, the website might be down for a couple of hours, maybe a day, but then it comes back up. That's a, it's a far cry from weapons of mass destruction type activity. The next thing that they will point to uh, is that they will point to cyber espionage. Uh, again, this is a very real threat. Um, it, it exists right now. It's happening right now, and it's a bit we should uh, definitely address. Um, but again, the rhetoric does not match the evidence. Uh, cyber espionage does not lead to casualties, much less mass casualties. Um, and finally, uh, when you look at the real cyber weapons that we have seen that do cause uh, do have a kinetic effect, that do cause physical damage, um, there have been very few of these. And uh, uh, there are sort of circumstances, um, for example, take Stuxnet. Um, with Stuxnet, what you see is a weapon that didn't want to be found, and there were no casualties uh, involved. Um, you look at something like the Aurora uh, project uh, that Idaho National Labs did. This was done on range, and it was uh, done by folks who knew how to get into uh, the system. Um, you had the Maruchi Shire incident uh, in Queensland, Australia, where you had a, a disgruntled employee uh, open up the valves to sewage and spill sewage out into uh, uh, a, a golf course in other parts of town. And the issue there is that the, the person who did this designed the system. Uh, so he was definitely an insider. So very few uh, incidents and very attenuated uh, instances. So there really is little evidence for us to believe um, that we are on the brink of a real calamity here. So what, what, what do you think are the real concerns that we should be focusing on? So I, uh, definitely um, we should take kinetic uh, cyber weapons seriously, but we have no reason to think that the infrastructure owners, uh, the power plant owners, uh, the network owners uh, are not taking this seriously now. And when it comes to cyber espionage, again, we should be taking this seriously uh, because we are having intellectual property uh, stolen. Uh, we are having all sorts of financial fraud uh, committed. 
but the, the, the uh, city banks, the banks of America of the world, um, they take this very seriously, right? The uh, uh, Boeings of the world, when they're having their plans for their next uh, product being stolen uh, by Chinese uh, hackers, they're losing uh, their information right there. They have every incentive uh, to get this fixed. So it really doesn't make sense to have government come in and tell them how they should be protecting uh, their networks. Now, to the extent that uh, uh, government and uh, the private sector can't right now in our existing law share information, well, then those barriers that we should uh, uh, remove. Uh, but it's not clear that right now uh, they can't share a lot of uh, information. Uh, but yes, to the extent that you can remove those barriers and you can do it while respecting uh, uh, consumer privacy, we, we should be doing that. Well, Senator Joe Lieberman um, is one of the ones that has equated the, the current threats to September 10th, 2001, or the eve of the tragic September 11th attacks. But when this sinks in with the American people, it, it will likely produce a, a panic reaction. So how would you refute this panic? Well, it's interesting. What you often hear um, from Senator Lieberman and other uh, pr uh, proponents of legislation is that if we don't do this, uh, we will have a cyber event that will cause chaos, right? So take, for example, a blackout. Um, a, recently, the White House put on a uh, simulation for senators uh, where they, they simulated what a cyber attack would look like that would cause a blackout in New York City in the summer uh, during a hot uh, uh, summer day. And, I, you know, this is a classified briefing, um, so we don't know exactly what uh, is the content of that briefing, but you can imagine that it may have included um, the sort of mass casualties that Senator Lieberman and others say would result from such a thing. Um, I hope that's not the case, because if you look at the evidence of history, we can look at actual blackouts that have happened in New York City. Starting in the 1930s, uh, there were a series of blackouts in the 1970s, and most recently in 2003, we had the uh, Northeast uh, blackout uh, that, that uh, happened in New York City and around the Northeast all the way up into Canada that affected millions of people for a few days. And what we find is that there was no panic. Um, there was no looting. Uh, there were few of any casualties. And uh, folks re reacted very calmly uh, uh, to the blackout. Um, they just started going home for the day. Um, uh, where there was congestion, so sometimes you would see uh, the traffic lights were out, and so there were traffic jams. Citizens just jumped in and started directing traffic voluntarily. Um, so people uh, have a really strong um, sense of resiliency. Mm -hmm. And so something like a blackout, um, while uh, something that is bad, is something we should definitely try to avoid, it is not the end of the world scenario that a lot of folks uh, uh, would, would portray it to be. Uh, critical uh, uh, life-sustaining uh, infrastructure like hospitals, they have uh, contingency plans for blackouts, whether it's caused by a cyber uh, event or not. If a blackout uh, is to cause um, mass chaos and panic, um, we're in big trouble not just from a cyber event, but just if a tree branch falls and causes a blackout like happened in 2003. Luckily, that's not the case. Uh, we're, we're very resilient, and uh, we have the capacity to uh, bounce back from it and uh, bounce back from it quickly. Well, also, Sean Henry, the executive assistant director of the FBI, recently indicated that the U.S. was losing to hackers. So do you agree with, with him, and, and how serious of a concern is this? Well, it's, it's hard to know exactly um, to measure whether you're, you're winning or losing. I guess to the extent that any, there are any cyber breaches and you're losing any data, you are losing. Um, but, of course, we're never going to have 100% security. Uh, the question is, do we have enough security? And, and that's very hard to measure. But it does seem to me that uh, the companies that are affected uh, have every incentive to do uh, uh, their best and invest as much as they need to uh, uh, to stop as many breaches as make sense uh, to stop. Um, and it may be the case that right now we're in a period where uh, uh, management of these companies is starting to realize the extent of this threat and they're beginning to realize that they need to shift resources uh, to security. Uh, but there's no reason to believe that they won't. Um, oftentimes what you will hear is that because cybersecurity uh, is a public good, because if one company is secure, it makes every other company more secure, uh, that it's something that they won't do. But of course, that's, that's not true. They have every incentive to protect uh, uh, their data. So 
uh, you know, companies left alone should be able to uh, protect their own uh, data. So in terms of the cybersecurity legislation that, that is being proposed, is this necessary in your opinion? I really haven't seen a compelling case uh, uh, for any legislation that would require companies to, uh, regu to uh, secure their networks in a particular way or that would require them to cert comply or, or certify with specific standards. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real need, it seems, uh, for companies uh, to be told how uh, to secure their own networks. Again, to the extent that uh, information sharing among private actors and between private actors and government uh, isn't happening because of privacy uh, le um, uh, legislation that exists, mm -hmm. you might want to remove the, those barriers. But of course, when you do that, need to be very careful uh, that you don't remove uh, uh, consumer privacy protections mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that you are not uh, getting rid of other protections and other uh, laws uh, that allow, uh, for example, for uh, uh, contracting. Mm -hmm. So uh, to the extent that we need legislation, I think it's very limited and it's limited to uh, information sharing. But certainly I don't think we need legislation that uh, requires uh, companies to secure their networks because they're doing it now and much less to tell them to secure it in a particular way. The Lieberman-Collins bill as well as the McCain bill, could you talk a little bit about uh, what they would do specifically? Well, the Lieberman-Collins bill would uh, require sector by sector um, uh, sort of analysis of the threats faced by each sector and then it would require uh, uh, basically companies to, to choose a security standard and certify that they are uh, living up to that standard. Uh, the McCain bill does not take a regulatory approach. There's no uh, real regulation. What it, what it does is that it allows for uh, uh, information sharing at uh, information sharing centers, cyber, cyber security centers, um, between, um, the, between private entities and between the, the private entities and uh, the government. Um, so those are the two approaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, just this week, news is out that the U.S. Cyber Command is contemplating new rules for cybersecurity. So what are your thoughts on this and the direction that it's headed? Well, Cyber Command is part of the military, mm -hmm. and uh, its brief is to uh, protect uh, federal um, uh, military networks and also to conduct offensive uh, cyber campaigns. Uh, to the extent that's part of a, uh, a larger uh, war plan. Um, and that's sort of separate from the civilian network space. And that is something that uh, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, has had uh, the lead in. Um, and there is a memo of understanding between the Pentagon and DHS where they uh, share uh, information. And I think it's important to make sure that we keep uh, the military and uh, uh, civilian networks separate. Um, we know that the National Security Agency, which is part of the Defense Department, um, would like to be more involved in the civilian uh, network space and be uh, more involved in monitoring uh, uh, cyber attacks and trying to prevent them. But that is inappropriate. Um, we saw uh, what, uh, previously what the NSA uh, has done with wireless, uh, with uh, warrantless uh, wiretapping. And we don't want a repeat of that when it comes to uh, to, to civilian uh, networks. All right. Well, what measures would you like to see implemented to, to address these cybersecurity concerns? Um, I think what we need to do is allow uh, private network operators uh, to give them room and space to figure this out on their own. Um, I don't think that this is a, uh, an existential threat. I think that uh, private networks right now are internalizing all of the costs of this uh, of these attacks, which means that they're bearing um, they're bearing the brunt of it. So of course they have every incentive to invest uh, uh, to try to stop them. Again, to the extent that we need more information sharing uh, and current laws uh, don't uh, allow for that um, to take place, we should uh, reform those laws in order to allow for more information sharing uh, among private actors and between private actors and the government. All right. Jerry Brito, thanks so much for talking with us and sharing your thoughts. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And reporting for Web Pro News, I'm Abby Johnson.